Welcome to Latin A. My name is Siamu Malele. I'm currently studying at the University of the Western Cape, pursuing an honors degree in applied geology. In the previous talk, we learned that the distance from the sun alone cannot account for the Earth's habitability. More is needed. We took the Earth as a bare rock to be negative 18 degrees Celsius using a model equation, and we found out that the Earth is way too cold to be habitable. Looking at a hierarchy of models, in this talk, we will focus on the second part, which adds static atmosphere to the bare rock that we found to be too cold. In this talk, I will define and explain what air is, what light is. I will also look at what happens when light and air meet by looking at how the sky is blue. All of this will be discussed in order to explain the greenhouse effect. I will end things off with why South Africa is a special place with regards to light and air. Air is made up of particles that are of different sizes and are constantly moving in rapid motion. Particles consist of atoms, elements, molecules, and aerosols. They are held close to the Earth by gravity. Air comprises of 78% nitrogen gas, 21% of oxygen gas, and the remaining 1% is composed of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. Air is the Earth's atmosphere and it has four layers. This graph shows the layers of the atmosphere based on the altitude in meters on the y-axis and in temperature on the x-axis. The atmosphere is heated from the bottom by the sun's ray, making the bottom of the troposphere hot. The temperature declines as you go up in the troposphere. The air in the stratosphere is dry. There is a significant drop in temperature when you enter the mesosphere. The mesosphere is the coldest of all the layers. The final layer in the atmosphere is the thermosphere, and it declines as it goes up in altitude. As you can see from this graph, it is very evident that the atmosphere has a very complicated temperature structure. So far, we know that Air is made out of particles of different sizes that are constantly moving in rapid constant motion. We know that the composition of nitrogen and oxygen are mostly held down by gravity at the bottom. The atmosphere has a complicated temperature structure. Now on to light. Light is something we can see with, but we can never see it, which is why it puzzled everybody. In the earliest 300 BC, Euclid made an observation. He theorized that light is a magic beam that comes from our eyes. And this could only be proved by the fact that we cannot see around corners. He said light only shoots in a straight line. This theory lasted for a thousand years. In the 1700s, Newton discovered that you can see in the dark. And this essentially falsified Euclid's theory, and therefore light does not come from our eyes, it comes from somewhere else. Actually, Newton thought magic beams are silly, and anyway, you can see it. Newton theorized that light is a stream of particles, and these particles are tiny and fly very, very super fast. From the sun, when light is shown, white light contains different color particles that are separated by a prism. When the density changes of these particles, the heavy particles are changing more and the light particles change less. A hundred years later, Thomas Young conducted an experiment called the double slit, where he discovered that light goes through a vacuum and it behaves like a wave. In the double slit experiment, light is shown through a stream. These particles pass down two open areas, which result in a band. This band has wave. Based on this, he was able to prove that light is a wave. Think about your shadow. It is not a straight line, and this means it refracts. It has a gray area. This gray area is the same as a wave. He conceptualized the wave as an electromagnetic wave. As he realized that the wave interacts with electricity and magnetism, this figure shows 
a wave having an electric field in one plane and a magnetic field in another plane. Einstein, a hundred years later, discovered that light is a particle. He proved it using the photoelectron effect, in which photons knock off one another, the same as playing pool. We see light as a duality. It has to be a particle and a wave or neither. Photons are tiny and exist in a quantum world, not as a particle nor a wave. It is just modeled as a wave or a particle. Light will always act as a wave or a particle. For this talk, I will be using light as a wave model. This is wrong, but very useful. You will understand what I mean in the modeling talk. The wave model has various frequencies, long wave radiation, which are microwaves, infrared waves, and radio waves. It also has short wave radiation, which are gamma ray, x-ray and ultraviolet humans see visible light because it is the light that we have evolved to see this is so because it is the portion that is most given off by the sun gamma ray has the shortest wavelength highest frequency and high energy as you move down the spectrum you can see that the wavelength increases frequency decreases and energy decreases the butterfly is red in color, which means it has a low frequency, low energy. It is large, as you can see, and it moves very slow. Whereas the fly is a blue color. In essence, it has high frequency, high energy. It's tiny and it's always fast moving. So far, we know that air is made out of particles of various sizes moving rapidly in constant motion. We know that light can be a wave or a particle as it displays duality. For this course, we are going to focus on light as a wave. Short wavelengths have the highest frequencies and as a result, high energy. Low energy is associated with low frequency and long wavelengths. When light meets air, it is reflected, absorbed, depending on chemical composition, scattered or transmitted. For us to understand why the sky is blue, we need to consider a couple of factors. One, the nature of light. Two, differential scattering. And three, our human eyes. We've already seen that light for the purpose of this workshop is a wave, thus it can exhibit long and short wavelengths. Differential scattering occurs when small particles in the upper atmosphere collide with light that has short wavelengths. This occurs because gravity holds all the big particles at the bottom of the atmosphere. Light with a short wavelength gets scattered the most during collision. Most of the short wave radiation is scattered in the upper atmosphere than the long wave radiation. A good example is the fly and the butterfly. The butterfly doesn't really feel anything when it flies. It doesn't get knocked around because it's so big. Whereas the fly gets knocked around easily by the small particles. This graph shows the peak wavelengths a human eye can see best. We expect to see violet since it has the most short wave radiation, but instead we see the sky is blue. This is because our human eye is poorly sensitive to violet and is strongly sensitive to blue. That is why we see blue skies, not violet skies. Bees, on the other hand, can see violet. Their sensitivity allows them to. So I'm pretty sure that when bees hear us saying that the sky is blue, the sky is blue, they think we must, we're pretty weird or something. The reason why sunsets are red over the ocean is because big particles are found at the bottom of the atmosphere and sea salt scatters the color red. Let's refresh our memory a little bit. Air is made out of particles that are constantly moving in rapid motion. Light, for the purpose of this workshop, is a wave. The sky is blue because of our human eyes being poorly sensitive to the violet color and strongly sensitive to the blue color. Short waves are scattered in the upper atmosphere. 
the difference between global warming and ozone depletion? Actually, they're quite similar. They both affect human life. Global warming is the climate change that occurs when gases such as carbon dioxide and methane trap excess heat in the Earth's lower atmosphere. Ozone depletion is the reduction in concentration in the ozone layer. Global warming encourages ozone depletion. Ozone depletion is a result of global warming which increases the global warming as it depletes. They are really dependent on each other. Global warming is characterized by the increase in temperature, whereas ozone layer is characterized by colder temperatures. This diagram explains how the atmosphere traps the sun's radiation and warming the earth. We have to revise some concept in order to make this diagram understandable. Vine's law states that all objects emit radiation. Frequency is proportional to temperature. So, the more temperature we have, the higher the frequency. The sun is a hot body and it emits high energy radiation which is transmitted by the atmosphere and it is absorbed by the earth. And as a result, the earth warms up. The earth releases infrared back to the atmosphere which is absorbed by the greenhouse gases make them vibrate. Therefore, Earth is colder than the Sun. These greenhouse gases have an asymmetric stretch as a result of their dipoles. Light is turned into vibrational energy. In the ozone layer, the greenhouse gases interact with electrons and they break bonds. The infrared interacts with the vibrations, making vibrations. Microwaves interact with rotations, resulting in rotation. Back to this diagram. The sun releases solar radiation, which passes through the atmosphere. Some of the radiation is reflected by the atmosphere and by the Earth's surface. Some of the solar radiation is absorbed by the Earth's surface and warms it. The Earth converts this energy into heat, causing emission of long-wave radiation back into the atmosphere. Some of the infrared radiation is absorbed and is re-emitted by the greenhouse gas molecules. This essentially causes the Earth's surface to heat up as well as the troposphere. The surface gains more and more heat and more infrared is emitted again. South Africa is a special place with regards to light and air because of our mountains that rise from the sea, enabling people to research the atmosphere. A good example is the Mpumalanga Dragonsberg from the God's Window near Gratskop, the greatest garment in the Karoo National Park near Beaufort West. The sun rises and sunset over the west and east coast is clear evidence of how beautiful and special South Africa really is. We know that air is made of particles of different sizes that are moving in rapid constant motion. We know that light is a wave. The sky is blue because of the nature of light, our human eyes, and short waves being scattered in the upper atmosphere. Vine's law help us to understand why the sun emits short waves and the earth emits long wave radiation. Greenhouse gases have an asymmetrical stretch which makes them vibrate faster and faster, thus warming up the atmosphere. This results in a way hotter planet than we anticipated. And as a result, still makes our earth not habitable. In the next talk, we will explain what is missing. We will also find out that the atmosphere is actually not static. The atmosphere is in motion. Thank you.